Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today, I thought I was going to talk about one subject, but it kind of evolved into something else. And let me explain. I have been saving up and buying some audiophile records for a while. The first one started as long ago as December until I just got the last one a couple of weeks ago. And originally I thought, I'm just going to talk about the quality of each record on a case-by-case -case basis, tell you whether I think they're worth the price. And then I started looking through these records and adding up how much they all cost. And it just totally went in a different direction for me. It made me start questioning, in this economy and in these times, should some of these expensive records be out there at all? Should we be paying $150, $125, or even $60 for these records? They're very expensive right now. And I want to talk about that, have an honest discussion. I have some people who watch my channel who don't buy any of these records. They have a $5 budget. Uh, they dig through these bins, they go to garage sales, and they find treasures, and they're extremely happy with vinyl collecting. I have other people who do watch my channel. They buy all of these premium records, and they're happy. And then there's people like me, and I kind of fall in the middle. I love finding a good bargain. I love originals. I love these good analog production and mobile fidelity records as well. And I have a huge variety of all of it in my record collection. And I'm going to talk about whether we need to have these fancy boxes, whether we need to have these really thick album covers. Does the sound quality even matter when we're talking about a $60 record, $150 record? Um, you know, it just really got me to thinking because I go to the grocery store now and I feel like I'm paying double for the groceries uh, compared to just uh, two or three years ago. It's really startling and there's just less money to go around for all of us. We can't buy the way we were buying a couple of years ago and I think that's healthy. I think maybe we were overspending a couple of years ago so now we're kind of going back into reality. Um, maybe the record companies or record labels don't love that, but they're having to adjust. I think we're basically back to where we were before 2020. Uh, maybe a little bit of a downturn even. But let's go ahead and talk about what a lot of people think are the sweet spot um, when it comes to records. And, and a lot of people would even argue this is too much, and I get why. Let's talk about this title first, The Best of the James Gang. Now, this one is one that you can probably find still to this day fairly cheaply if you look for an original. They're usually not in great shape, but uh, you can find them. I love Joe Walsh. He's in my top five of best guitar players, my favorite. I'm not saying best, my personal favorite's a better way to put it. I love Joe Walsh. I love his work with the James Gang. And so when this came back in stock and I had the extra money, I went ahead and bought it at $40 from Analog Productions. And it came with a beautiful gatefold. I don't believe originals, or at least the copy I have did not come with the gatefold before. So uh, that was really great. You're also getting a really nice anti-static sleeve and good quality vinyl. And like I said, this version of the James Gang sounds fantastic. It is very comparable in price to any other reissue you buy, and yet you're getting it from Analog Productions. Uh, this one, I believe, was uh, mastered by Kevin Gray, and I think it sounds absolutely wonderful. Here is another one. This is Mobile Fidelity's $40 uh, response here. You're getting a Miles Davis record, Milestones by Miles Davis. $40, it's 33 RPM, a single LP, like the James Gang. You're getting a sturdy album cover. It doesn't have a gatefold, but you're getting a wonderful record. And uh, it is mastered by uh, Krieg Wunderlich. Sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, the difference between the James Gang and Miles Davis is when I'm out shopping, the Miles Davis records 
no matter what year they came out or reissue or original, whatever, uh, they command a higher price than the James Gang. So I think both of those records at $40, when you think about what reissues cost nowadays, they're a great value. And a lot of you would probably make the argument, this is where they need to stop. That should be what they're doing. Keep it at 33 RPM. Keep the jackets a little more standard, uh, even though they're really nice and thick, you know, $40, that's where a lot of people want to stay. But no, <laughs> these records go higher and higher when we're talking about audiophile pressings. Let's uh, go ahead and talk about another one. This one was ordered from the In Groove. I got free shipping on it, which makes it super nice. Uh, this is Lady in Satin, Billie Holiday. The original came out in 1958. On this pressing, her, her vocals aren't quite what they had been. This was a year before she passed away. She was an addict, uh, had a lot of problems in her life, and had a, le a really sad life. And her voice is weaker on this performance. But it's still Billie Holiday, and you could still hear the character in her voice. And um, there's a, like a little bit of a history when you listen to it and you realize what all she had already been through, her life. Uh, she only had a year left. Um, it brings a little bit more to it, a little more clear picture. And I think it's a beautiful record, sounds wonderful. The musicianship behind her is top notch and it just shows in spades on this. Again, a $60 record, you're getting a beautiful gatefold. You're getting a 1958 record. And I haven't heard any other version of this record, but I strongly suspect that unless you find a 1958 record, in mint condition that's probably the only way you're going to hear it sound as good as this and that was a long time ago good luck finding a really super clean copy that doesn't make any sound i can't even imagine so for me this was a no-brainer and i have no regrets of paying 60 dollars for it this is one of my daughter's favorite female vocalists if not her favorite i think it's her favorite when i'm gone this will be in her collection and she will pass it down. So to me, $60 well spent. And I really love it from Analog Productions. Uh, now, a lot of you would say it's not worth it. And I get that. But when you consider how old that title is and how hard it is to find clean, you kind of have to add that into the cost and think, okay, if I bought an original of this, how much would I pay for a VG copy? You know, when you consider it like that, you can justify the $60 a little more. Now, let's go ahead and talk about a one-step from Mobile Fidelity. Again, I bought this one from the Ingroove, so I got free shipping. And this is one that I originally thought I was going to stick with an original LP of, but I decided to go ahead and pick this up. I'm um, getting so many of those Eagles one-steps. I've enjoyed every one of them. I think they sound absolutely wonderful. Uh, let's talk a little bit with this one because the packaging comes into play. We are paying a premium for the packaging and a lot of you do not care a hoot about the packaging. You'd make the argument, they take up too much room. Uh, I hear you on that. At the same time, I like being able to read the title, you guys. I'm getting older. Those really, really flat records, like the original, can't see it anymore. They're hard to look for. Uh, but you know what? This is exceptionally beautiful. I love those southwestern colors when you look at that cover with the black and the gold. They're really, really beautiful. And for a lot of you who don't care, I get that. But for me, you know, maybe I'm just being a woman here. I love pretty things. I love the way these look on my shelves. I think they add a touch of class. I think they're beautiful. And in the way I enjoy a pretty piece of art or a beautiful candle, it just adds to the chic. It adds to the class of the uh, of the room. My best friend came over the other day. She's not into records at all, and I showed her my bookshelf. She immediately went over to the One Steps and the UHQRs, and she was like, oh, wow, those are gorgeous. What are those? That's the first thing that caught her eye. So um, I personally like the premium packaging, but... The record also has to sound good, and it also has to be a title I really, really want. So the Eagles have not disappointed yet. They all sound very, very good. And by the way, this is my copy, 
number 8,848. So love having that. Um, of course, I put on um, the song One of These Nights. This came out in 1975. And I was really extremely young. And yet I can still remember these songs being played on the radio and loving them. And I think uh, they sound really good on here. Take It to the Limit was the song that was really, really played heavily when I was a kid. I have memories of getting up and getting ready for school, mom having the radio on, because she had it on all the time, thank goodness. I remember hearing Take It to the Limit. On Take It to the Limit, I guess if I have any complaint, and it would be on this original as well, when it comes to Take It to the Limit, I really wish Randy Miser's uh, vocals and the harmonies were pushed forward in the mix a little bit. And maybe that's a choice they make, or maybe it's not possible. Maybe the projection of his voice isn't the same. It could be that because that is a song that builds and builds and builds over time, and at the end, he just really releases and goes for those high notes. Maybe if those vocals were a little more forward, it would detract from that build and that ending of that incredible song. I don't know. I just know that Glenn Fry's vocals are exactly where they should be. And Don Henley's are exactly where they should be. Uh, and they sound incredible. And, you know, I'm when I was listening the first time, I did not pick up on what I think about the Randy Meisner vocals. I just enjoyed it for what it was. A truly outstanding record, sounding amazing. But when I put on my little critical thinking hat, I did notice that. I do love the drumming on Take It to the Limit and the hi-hat is incredible. So uh, for me, One Steps and UHQRs, I love the packaging. Yes, they take up more room, that's okay. They add to the beauty. They also add to the cost. So I'm very, very particular about which ones I'm gonna get and which ones I won't. Um, there's a lot of them that are costing $150 when it comes to UHQRs that I haven't been buying. Um, you know, it's a lot of money. It, it's hard. It's hard to talk about because I know that we're all in different financial situations. So um, some of us can buy every single one of them without blinking an eye. Uh, some of us can't buy any of them at all. And I'm kind of somewhere maybe in the middle where I want to be careful with my money but I don't want to miss out on something that I really, really want and then have to pay a premium later on the secondhand market. Let's go ahead and talk about another record that costs $60. It's one I've been wanting for a really long time based on other people in, um, in YouTube world saying that it sounds amazing because otherwise this is not an expensive record. This should probably be a $5, $10 record at the most. Dream with Dean. This is Dean Martin. This is the Analog Productions 45 RPM, um, $60 record. It was mastered by Ryan K. Smith. It sounds incredible. His vocals on here. First of all, you have to love a crooner. If you don't like Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra music, you're not going to love this. His voice is very unique and distinct. But that is the showcase of this album, his vocals. The instrumentation and the music is behind his vocals. His vocals is where the magic is. Wow, is this, this knocked me off, off my feet. It was so good. It sounds incredible. Um, and the music's good too. I love these old records like Billie Holiday and this. It just takes you into another genre, another era, I should say. It puts you, makes, you know, it makes me think about my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, what they were listening to when they were young, my mom. Um, so Dean Martin was definitely one of those wonderful ones. And I love, at the end of the day, putting this incredible record on and his vocals just take me away. The sound quality is fantastic. So Dean Martin records are usually not expensive, and I've not heard an original of this. If you have the original, you probably didn't pay a ton of money for it. Let me know how it sounds. I can tell you this one, you put it on, you don't even know until the music starts that you have a record on. It's so quiet, and it sounds like a dream. A dream with Dean sounds like a dream. And let's go ahead and talk about Dusty in Memphis. This was a record that I had been really wanting. 
Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this came out in 1969. I had always wanted an original of it because I love the album cover. I love her pose. I think this is just one of those iconic albums. Um, Dusty in Memphis by Dusty Springfield. Uh, she had a terrific voice. I love a lot of her songs and I love her. And this one, again, I'd been looking for an original and I found an original last summer at a record fair in St. Augustine, Florida. Unfortunately, when I looked at the vinyl, uh, it wasn't up to par and I knew I wouldn't be happy with it. So I finally decided to pull the trigger, $60, no gatefold, but a nice album cover, two LPs, 45 RPM. I believe this one is mastered and cut by Kevin Gray. Here is the problem. I put Dream with Dean on first and heard his vocals and how great he sounds. This one oops, about knocked everything out of it. Does not live up to that. It's good and I would not say don't buy it, but it's $60 and it doesn't sound as good um, as some of these that I've shown today. It's the weaker of them. It might be the way it was recorded. The music is still really strong and I'm happy to have a copy. I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't return it. It sounds good enough. It definitely passes that test. It's just when you get something like this, probably one of the best vocals in my collection, and then you put on Dusty in Memphis, you immediately hear the difference. But is it worth $60? I wish this one would have been a $50 record or a $45 record. I might feel a little better about purchasing this one but it's still great and I have really no regrets about any of them I bought. However, I add them up and I think about what else I could be spending my money on. Here's the bottom line though when it comes to these audiophile records. Should they stop making them? No. Uh, they haven't quit making luxury cars just because of the economy. They, uh, You can still take a luxury cruise versus a regular cruise. Uh, you can still buy a more expensive home versus a more basic home. Yes, there is a market for these wonderful records and I am I dabble into them and I enjoy them and I love them. Uh, and some people buy them all and some people buy none at all. I'm just thankful for all of the choices. But more importantly, I want to hear what you have to say. I really like hearing your input. Um, we're all going to disagree on that, or maybe we all feel like, yeah, they can put them out there. We don't have to buy them. We just buy what we want and what we like, and that's really the way it should be. So I uh, want to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please push the like button and the subscribe button. Uh, I really appreciate it and um, hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.